In this video, we are going to test our React utility functions. This video is part of a multi-part series where we first built out a React tab component and now we're writing the test for it. I'll include a link to the initial video where we built out the component and the card above. And then of course, links to all the other videos in this series will be in the description below. Let's get going. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I'm gonna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. We're gonna start by testing something easy. In our utils directory, we have a file called slugify.js. This is a little helper function that will take any string that we pass it and turn it into a URL slug. So I'm gonna create a tests folder that will contain all the files for my utility tests. Our components are a little different. I already have the pieces for each component wrapped in its own folder. So here we can just let the test live right next to all the other files in that directory. Jest uses two different naming conventions to look for test files. You can either name your file whatever.test.js. So for our tabs component, tabs.test.js or it will look for a folder called underscore underscore tests underscore underscore. I'm gonna rename our directory in our utils folder to include underscores. I'm gonna create a file for our slugify tests called slugify.test.js. Now, technically, I could just name our file slugify.js. It knows that this is a test because it's within the properly named folder. Similarly, similarly, similar, similarly, similarly, similar, similarly. I could have left the folder name as tests without the underscores as long as the file inside is named correctly with .test.js. It would still have found it, but I'm gonna do double duty here. Really, I just like that the double underscore convention moves the test folder to the top of that directory. I also like that the file name within VS Code says .test.js, which serves as a reminder that we're in the test file and not the component itself. Using our test watch script that we set up in the previous video, link in the card above, let's open our terminal within VS Code by hitting control tilde and typing yarn run test colon watch. So our terminal window is displaying some fail messages. We scroll up, it says your test suite must contain at least one test. We haven't written any tests yet, so it doesn't really know what to do with that yet. That's fine, we'll get there. The important thing is that it's picked up on the files that we've created. Before we move on, you may have noticed that at the bottom is a section for watch usage. If you don't see this, it might say press W to show more and then you'll see the menu items that I'm looking at here. And this just gives us a few more keyboard commands. You can run all the tests, just failed tests, test within a specific file, test named a specific way, or we can quit. So I'm gonna type P to run the test within a specific file name, and then I'm gonna type slugify hit enter, and now it will only run the test within our slugify.test file. I just didn't want to see a failed test for our tabs when we're not even there yet. Okay, so within our slugify.test.js file, let's write our first test. First, we need to import our slugify function into our file so that we can test it. Import slugify from slugify. For writing our actual tests, you can follow two different conventions. I'll show you both ways. The first way, uses describe. This is a function. So the first parameter is a string where we say what we're going to describe. I'm describing slugify. The second parameter is a function that wraps everything. Inside we want to say what it does. So it is also a function. The first parameter is a string, again, where we say exactly what we're testing. So it converts a string to a slug. The second parameter takes a function. So this contains all of our individual tests. We might say expect something to be something. Or we could say expect else to be else. So give that a save. And this is just dummy code so that you get an idea for how this works. But in our terminal window, our tests are now passing. I'm gonna comment this block out so that you can still see it. 
The second way is similar, but it condenses the describe it walk into a single line. So I'm gonna say test. And like earlier, we're just saying what we're testing. So we're testing that Slugify converts a string to a slug. And the second parameter is a function that wraps all of our tests. So for now, I'm just going to copy our fake tests from earlier, give that a save. You'll see everything is still passing. Really, you can use whichever method you feel is easier to read and you're more comfortable working with. Personally, I really like test. I like that it condenses the describe it block into one line, plus it makes a little bit more sense to me. This is what I'm testing and this is what I expect it to do. Besides, most of the documentation and tutorials that you will read online use the same method. Okay, so let's get rid of the fake tests and write actual tests, but most of your tests will probably look like this. We expect something to happen and then we compare the results. So open the Jest documentation and using matchers on the left side. So let's just skim through here to get an idea of some of the options that we have available. There's a to be, which we used in our dummy code. There's a to equal, where you can check to see if values are equal. There's a to be null, to be undefined, to be defined, to be truthy, to be falsy. Or look, you can even chain these together and put a not in front. And the list just keeps on going, but you get the idea. Let's go back to our code and we expect the slugify value of tab one to be tab dash one. Give that a save and our test is passing. So let's check a few more of these. We just wanna make sure that if there's a weird character that got entered, it doesn't make its way into our URL. So let's duplicate our expect line and replace the values. So let's say Amy's tab to be Amy's tab. Give that a save. Awesome, it's still passing. Uh, let's do a couple more. What if we already had a dash within our name. So Amy tab should be Amy tab. What if we had an explanation point? Amy tab, awesome, everything's working. If you're curious, I'm gonna break this on purpose so you can see what a failed test looks like. I'm gonna change this last test to be Amy's tab. Yeah, our test failed, but these messages are so helpful. You can see the pink message at the top will tell you which test failed. We only have one test, but once you start writing more tests, this becomes very helpful. And then it tells you what it was expecting to see, Amy's dash tab, and what it received was just Amy dash tab. And it points to the statement it failed at. Awesome, right? So let's fix this and celebrate. Done. Done. As always, I posted the code that I used in this video on GitHub, link in the description below. Feel free to download it, use it, modify it, whatever, it's yours. The idea behind this video series of creating a React component and writing the tests to support it came out of a course that I'm working on that builds a web application from start to finish. These YouTube videos have been really fun to make as we build these small one-off little projects, but I wanted to do something that strings everything together, putting them into the context of a bigger picture. If this is something that you think you'd be interested in, there's a link in the description below to join the waiting list and that will get you more information, early access, and any launch perks. In the next video for this series, we will actually write the tests for the React component. If you like this video and wanna see more videos on web design and development, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.